Hey guys, are you a junior and wondering what you can do to prepare for college and be totally ready and get into the most awesome college possible? If so, this video is for you. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna step through some of the things that you need to make sure you're on top of junior year so that you are ready come senior year to apply to college. Before we get going, I recommend that you subscribe to our channel, especially if you're a junior wanting to be college ready because we have so many videos here at Super Tutor TV that go over the ACT and the SAT and college essays and all the things that are going to be important for you to know about as you navigate this process. So uh, definitely subscribe to our channel. And the other thing I recommend that you do is subscribe to our mailing list at supertutortv.com slash subscribe. And finally, the last thing that I wanna encourage you guys to do is we have this new page on Amazon, which is called an influencer page. And basically it's a way for you guys to support Super Tutor TV. And all that it is, is it's a page on Amazon where I basically have annotated a bunch of books for the SAT, for the ACT, and I'm gonna be adding more for like the whole college journey thing. So if you're starting this college journey and you want some book resources or some of the book resources that I talk about in this video, go check out our influencer page. We're gonna put the link on the page right here. And then you can also find it in the description below this video. So without further ado, let's get going. The first thing that I'm gonna to recommend to all of you juniors to do is to sign up for and take the PSAT. After you take the PSAT, you're gonna get a score back. And that is going to be a great tool to sort of diagnose and figure out what's going on test-wise and, and sort of frame up your plan for college. So that's your first step. We have a great video on what's a good PSAT score if you wanna to try to understand that a little bit better, which you guys can go check out. And then after you've taken the PSAT, that was number one. Number two on my list is you want to evaluate your options and choose ACT or SAT. How do you evaluate your options? Well, you have to make a choice between your SAT and ACT. We also have a video on that, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail on whether you should take the SAT or the ACT, but I recommend that everybody not neglect to take a practice ACT and figure out how you're doing on that test. And if you go to our What's a Good PSAT Score blog that goes with our video, we have a concordance table that relates the SAT, the PSAT, and the ACT all together so you can see what scores correlate with what other scores so that you can kind of make a game plan and see which test you're better at, okay? So using those resources, like I said, we have other videos to help you do that. You need to figure out, am I taking the SAT or am I taking the ACT? Most students should just pick one. The next thing on your list is to make a preliminary college list. And how do you do that? Well, you go to college fairs that are offered by your school. If there are any panels that are offered at your school, if people are coming to visit, if there is an Ivy League info session night at your high school or in your area or at a hotel nearby, go ahead and go to those. Start to learn more about colleges. And if you don't have those at your school or if you're homeschooled, then get on the internet. What's awesome is that you guys have an awesome resource called the World Wide Web, which has so much information on so many colleges. What I recommend that you guys do too is don't just look at the college websites, look for reviews of colleges. One of the best things about the internet is that people can share their own opinions. So you can get on sites like Quora or Reddit and ask students who actually went to these colleges, what do they think of their experience? Other people are one of the best resources you have for figuring out what kind of colleges are going to be a good fit for you. So if you have personal friends who went to schools, ask them about their experiences. But if you don't, the internet is wide open and there's so many people willing to share their experiences. So go and check that out, cool? Another place to look is you can look at lists online. US News and World Report and Forbes, for example, have top 50 schools list. You can also look at top schools in the departments that you're interested in. The other thing that you have to take into serious account is what is your GPA and what are your test scores? Because those are gonna give you a baseline range of what kind of schools or what tier of school you should probably start your search in. So after you do all that, you're gonna start to build out a preliminary college list. You should have a couple of reaches, you should have some target schools that are in range of scores that you've already gotten and you should have a couple of safeties. Now, if you're looking to prep for some of these tests because you're looking to improve your score on your standardized ACT or SAT, et cetera, I would say you can budget somewhere between 100 to 200 points on the SAT with serious prep, and you can probably budget somewhere from three to five points on the ACT with serious prep. And that range is really gonna depend on you and what your struggles are and all that good stuff. I can't predict for you exactly how much you can improve, but those are kind of ballpark ideas for the ones that end up being your reaches. Uh, you can kind of keep that in mind when you're setting goals. Okay, cool. The next step is to figure out your test prep game plan. 
And what I mean by your test game plan is you're going to figure out what are the dates that I'm going to take these tests and when am I gonna have time to prep for them, right? When you wanna set up your test schedule, what you wanna think about is not just your ACT or your SAT. You also wanna think about um, AP exams and SAT subject tests. Now you're like, whoa, 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 SAT subject tests, what are those? Do I even need those? Most students who are going to a top 50 or top 100 school will need some sort of SAT subject test, or it's a good idea to have them because it helps. And just remember that SAT subject tests and the SAT itself are given on the same test date and you can't take both on the same day. So that's gonna go into your planning. If you really wanna know if you're not applying to top, top schools and you're not sure whether you need them or not, watch our video, which is uh, what top colleges require in terms of SAT subject tests, and you can kind of figure out what you need to do on that docket. But figure out your SAT subject test, figure out when you're taking your ACT and your SAT. Remember, they're only given on certain dates during the year. And remember with AP exams, the reason why it's important to, to think about this is you wanna dovetail your AP exams that match the SAT subject tests together, and you probably wanna space out your testing so you don't have total stress and you're not trying to prep for a bunch of tests that are different subjects all at the same time. So you wanna plan out your test schedule so you know when are you taking your subject tests, when are you taking which AP tests, and when are you taking your SAT slash ACT. For SAT and ACT, I recommend that most students plan to take it twice, but have a third test date available on the calendar in case they absolutely need it. After you come up with your test schedule, you need a prep game plan. So you've gotta figure out how are you gonna prep for these tests? Well, you are in luck because you found SuperTutor TV and we are going to help you with this one. We have videos on the SAT and the ACT totally for free all over our YouTube channel. I usually recommend that most students do about two to three months of prep before their first take. And the other thing that I'm gonna say is if you're prepping for the ACT, we have an awesome online ACT prep system that is like sitting across the desk from me. Uh, it's the closest thing you can get to customized private tutoring and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than customized private tutoring. For the SAT, what can you do? You can check out our videos here and by next fall, 2018, we should have an SAT prep series available at supertutortv.com as well. So that's a great way to prep. And then in terms of other prep ideas, like I said, watch our YouTube videos. I give you guys tons of advice. So go to our YouTube videos. It's a great place to start. Cool, cool. Next on our list, figure out scholarships and how to pay for college. We have an awesome series here on supertutortv.com that was created by Lee Ann, who is one of our associates last summer, who attends NYU and is on scholarship there. And she's going to share with you all of her awesome experience with scholarships. And she explains way better than I could all about what scholarships are available, how they work, how to research them, all that good stuff. But as a junior, you wanna kinda of get on your radar, like how do scholarships work? How much money can I actually expect to get? Like what's this whole universe about? Start to explore that and start to get your feet wet and that whole pond of scholarships, okay? And again, our, our series is a great place to start. You can check it out here on Super Tutor TV. And then dovetailing on that idea of figuring out the scholarship game, talk to mom and dad. So when it comes to trying to pay for college as well as where you're going to go, you probably need to have a conversation with mom and dad to talk to them about their expectations and your expectations because a lot of these schools are going to assume that your mom and dad are going to help you pay for college. If for some reason your parents have a different idea, you probably need to talk to them about it so that you can figure out what actually are my options. Am I gonna to have to pay my way through? Do I need to get a full ride no matter where I go or else I can't go to college, right? Like what are your options? Talk to mom and dad and, and figure out like how am I gonna pay for college? Like what are the logistics of college? What are they supportive of? What are they not supportive of? All that stuff, hopefully you won't get in a big fight. Step number eight is I want you to check your schedule for holes that you might not have seen. Now, if you go to super crazy prep school, boarding school on the East Coast, where 99% of the student body is college bound, this probably doesn't apply to you because you probably have amazing guidance counselors who have already stepped you through everything you need to know to get into any school you want to get into. But if you go to public school like I went to, or if you go to a private school with fewer resources, or if you're homeschooled, you may not have the advantage of having a guidance counselor walk you through your high school schedule to make sure that you have taken all the courses you need to take to be admitted to the school you wanna to go to. One big example that I know of is the University of California system expects all of its students to take four years of social science or history. And I occasionally get students from out of state who don't have that on their resume 
and they're already into senior year and they're like, oh my God, I don't have enough social science and history to apply to UC Berkeley and it's my dream school. To avoid situations like that, what I recommend doing again is go through that college list, go through the web pages at those colleges and see what do they require in terms of coursework. If you find holes in your schedule or you need a couple extra classes to really get into the school of your dreams or you're looking over your transcript and you don't have the grades in one of the courses or you don't have one of the prerequisites that MIT wants to see, now is your time to figure out how to get it done. And one of the biggest resources that you guys have right now if you're still a junior is the summer. If you haven't taken a course that you need and you can't fit it into senior year, you can always do summer school. And don't just limit yourself to summer school at your high school. Remember that you can take community college courses in most communities. And even some major universities offer high school students the opportunity to take courses. In LA, for example, UCLA will offer high school students the opportunity to take real head-on college courses now and get credit for them. And it's a great way to get the prerequisites checked off that you need to get into college. Show colleges that you are ahead of the pack and taking college level courses and make up for the fact that you didn't plan well enough to do it in your high school schedule. So it's a win-win situation, this idea of taking courses over the summer um, and filling in your schedule if you need to. And even if you don't need to fill in your schedule, it's a way to be an overachiever and go above and beyond. So something to think about. So now we're moving on to number nine. And number nine is figure out your summer. Your summer is a great opportunity to go above and beyond and to do something cool. Now, if you need to make money because you're like, oh my God, I have to pay for college and my parents aren't helping me very much, this is a great time to look for a summer job. If you just want to gain experience in the field you're interested in, then maybe you can go find an internship. You could also try to take summer courses. That could be, again, at your local community college. Or if you can afford it, it could be at, you know, some Ivy League school for a four-week session or something. But just because you don't have the money to go on some expensive program doesn't mean that you can't find some way to make a difference or some way to get involved, right? Whether that's contacting college professors in the area that might be doing research and maybe you could be an intern in their lab or again, taking a summer school course from your high school online or at a local community college. But find a way to get involved, find a way to show your passion, find a way to stay intellectual this summer, and that's going to help give you some brownie points on your college application. And now number 10 on your college checklist is to start planning your college visits. Figure out when are you gonna fit them in, how are you gonna fit them into your schedule if you have time or budget to do them. Now, if you don't have the budget to do college visits, remember, you can always visit colleges on the internet. And so just see if you can make some time so that you can do some research and find out more about schools. And like I said, asking other people is always a great way to learn about colleges if for some reason you can't go visit the campus in person. And don't hold yourself back. Just because you can't visit a campus in person doesn't mean that uh, certain colleges aren't going to be right for you. If you can't afford college visits, what I would recommend doing is applying to the colleges that have the programs that are most interesting to you. And then maybe after you get in, if you can find the resources to go visit, you can go and just make sure that that's the college for you. And that's about it. It goes without saying that you want to be involved in activities, you want to be passionate about those, and that you want to be getting awesome grades. You have to keep your grades up. But these other 10 steps are ways that you as juniors can get ready. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe. And I'll see all of you guys next time at Super Tutor TV. Ciao for now.